So then, the draw for the semifinals and final phases of the 2022-2023 UEFA Nations League has been released, and these are the results for the final four teams that will be duking it out this summer in June. The Netherlands, the host nation, winners of League A Group 4 versus Croatia, the winners of League A Group 1, and the other semifinal, semifinal number two, so Netherlands, Croatia, semifinal number one, semifinal number two, Spain, the winners of League A Group 2 versus Italy, the winners of League A Group 3. So what do we think? Right off the bat, let's start with the Netherlands. I'm going to give like just overall thoughts on the draw, where these teams are right now in the aftermath of the most recent World Cup, uh, as well as give early predictions toward the end of this video. So, the Netherlands, as the host nation, this is their finest opportunity to win some silverware, which would be their first trophy since the 1988 European Championship. A nation like the Netherlands that is among the best footballing nations, but are just so absolutely starved for silverware, for trophies, this is lined up for them to take this. And because of the fact that they are hosting this, I think they have to be billed as the slight favorites to win this competition. On top of already having been, I think, um, the most informed European side entering this last World Cup, a position that I've held at least in one video prior to Qatar 2022, uh, they had the most dominant performance in the Nations League last summer, comfortably topping their group with, I believe, 16 points ahead of Belgium, whom they beat twice. Uh, so in stellar form, and I think coming off a World Cup, exiting having a moderate, success, moderately successful finish in the quarterfinals against eventual champions Argentina, this will be something for them to build on uh, with uh, a potential trophy this upcoming summer. Louis van Gaal is now gone from the helm. Ronald Koeman is back, who had left a few years ago to coach Barcelona, part of that whole rebuilding phase for the Netherlands after they missed Euro 2016 and World Cup 2018. Then he left to go to Spain, um, to, to La Liga. Now he's back for another stint in charge. Will he be able to continue on and... Um, uh, you know, pick up where Van Gaal left off. There is some a lot of familiarity between Koeman and a lot of players on these teams. On this team, Memphis Depay, Steven Bergvijn, Wout Weghorst, some of the veterans on this squad. Um, and then he'll have a couple of youngins, young players at his disposal uh, that have been integrated into this Dutch team. Guys like Cody Gakpo, who made uh, had somewhat of a breakout performance at the World Cup, the 23 year old youngster for Liverpool. Um, Matthias De Ligt, a 23 for, uh, defender for Bayern Munich. So the Netherlands are still hot. They're still a team that are coming in hot in 2023. By the time June comes around, Koeman will be been in charge for about six months. So we will see how this team transitions to him uh, and his second stint in charge here. And I think that the Netherlands are still a side that are primed to be an exciting team um, for the next few years. They finished as the only undefeated side in Qatar 2022. Remember, they went out on penalties to Lionel Messi's Argentina. And I think that on paper, I still would have billed them as like very, very marginally the best team of these four. But the fact that they're hosting with these games in Rotterdam and Enschede, that should be extra sort of... Um, a bit of an oomph for them uh, to, to, to be seen as favorites to, to win this competition. Now for Croatia. Croatia, what a statement. Yet again, they did it. Another deep run in a World Cup. Anyone who thought that 2018 was an aberration or a fluke, they were shut up. Semi-finalists, third place finishers, Back-to-back -back tournaments, Zlako Dalic's men, really, this generation of Croatian players has shown that they are a quintessential modern-day tournament team. And just like for the Netherlands, but for a different reason, Croatia has a golden opportunity here to win 
a major trophy for the first time in their program's history ever, ever. The Nations League, of course, not in the same uh, esteem uh, compared to a European Championship or a World Cup, but this is an opportunity here for Croatia to really cap off the last few years of success and really growing as a side and getting a, a a trophy and a lot of people a lot of neutrals will neutrals will be will be rooting for them in this competition i do think they got the hardest possible draw for the semifinals coming up against a red hot dutch team the host nation but this is doable i, I think that croatia has nothing to fear uh, I, like as you'll see in a moment, you can make a case for any one of these four teams to really go on to win it. That's why with competitions like this, very volatile, the margins are very slim. Um, you can't really, in too meaningful of a way, look at any of these semifinals and say X team should win, should come through. Um, so Croatia... <laughs> We're five months away. There's plenty of time for guys like Bejo and Musar, even Simic, to show up and displace the likes of Petkovic or Levaya and Budimir. I think Ivan Perisic will still be good enough for the squad. Defensively, I think Croatia are very stout. Guys like Sosa, Juranovic, Stanisic, they're decent. Maybe not exactly world-class, um, but any pairing out of Gvardiol, one of the best defenders of this last World Cup, I would put him on my best 11 for Qatar 2022. You know, Gvardiol plus Sutalo, Erlich, it's very good. And in the midfield, as always, the midfield for Croatia is going to be fine. Croatia, since the 2000s, we're approaching now 15 plus years. Croatia has perpetually had one of the best midfields in international football. So that's not a, that's not going to be a concern, right? And I would expect to see Luka Modric... Um, turn up for this tournament as well. I mean, why wouldn't he? This is an opportunity. You're two games from potentially winning a trophy with your nation. Yeah, he's up there in age, but he had another good performance in the World Cup, I thought. Instrumental in Croatia's upset victory over Brazil in the quarterfinals. I would be surprised if he's not there, unless he's injured, of course. Um, Kovacic is a little bit of a question mark, I think. Brozovic at the current moment still hasn't fully recovered from his own situation. But in five months, like at least two of those three, I think, between Modric, Kovacic, and Brozovic should be fine. Um, I do think Croatia, one big weakness, as we saw in the World Cup, they need a striker. They really need a striker. Uh, and they need some attacking players in general. Uh, but it could it could be a much better situation than uh, at the World Cup with Levaya and Petko and and Budimir. So that's really the the, the weakness I think for Croatia here because one of the reasons why they came back in extra time against Brazil was because Brazil relented so much space and allowed Croatia time on the ball in those dying few minutes. And Croatia had one really good counterattack that got them that goal that pushed the game eventually to penalties. They're going to have to come up with something here. They're going to have to solve the striker situation in the next few months. But I think that they can do it. I think that they are well in contention here. And I think that this this matchup with the Dutch is going to be more open than maybe people would think. And I could see a lot of goals, a lot of goals in this match. And one final thing about Croatia is that UEFA Nations League, these teams take it seriously. This competition might actually mean more to a team like Croatia than it might for the Dutch or Spain and Italy. And that could prove all the difference because this is the type of platform that Croatia could really capitalize on in order to get a trophy for the first time ever. Spain. Spain are a little bit of an enigma because... Despite the fact that Luis Enrique, who is now gone, you're seeing a lot of changing of the of the guard in the, in the aftermath of this World Cup, a lot of managers switching up and leaving, the end of an era for a lot of these guys. Um, despite the fact that Luis Enrique, during his time, integrated a lot of youngsters into this team, bringing, bringing in Pedri, the 20-year-old of Barcelona, guys like Gavi, uh, I mean, like Ferran Torres, 
Nico Williams. You have to give Luis Enrique all the credit in the world. And I think that just like the Netherlands, Spain are a team for this the rest of this decade to really look out for if they come into their own and if they figure out their own goal scoring woes and are able to break teams down more comprehensively. But at the moment, I still don't think this side is fully fleshed out and has come into their own in a way they should. And it's been reflected in the last few years under Luis Enrique. Another round of 16 exit in the World Cup is a massive disappointment. Finishing second in their group that lost to Japan, who they kind of did not show enough respect to, massive disappointment. They're still struggling to break down inferior opponents a lot of the time. We saw this in the European Championship in 2020. We saw this in the World Cup for 2022. And Spain are just a team that are not adventurous. And one thing I think that Luis Enrique really screwed up with is that uh, this over insistence on playing, uh, uh, continuing on with a barely brushed on tiki taka style of that, that just doesn't take risks. That style of play just doesn't take any risks. It's not adventurous and it costs Spain. I don't know very much about their new manager. They have in charge now. Luis Enrique has been replaced, like I said. A man by the name of Luis de la Fuente has come in. Do I think that. Uh, do I have as much confidence in Spain as I would with the Netherlands of a smooth transition? Because like I said, for the Netherlands, Ronald Koeman is, is in with a few months time left before this tournament. I don't have the same confidence. I don't. And even though they're coming up against an Italian team who they bested at the same phase, at the same tournament, semifinals of the last edition, they beat Italy in, on, uh, on, in Italy's own turf to make the final of the Nations League. Little bit of history between Spain and Italy. They seem to have a back and forth tug of war in international competitions, one beating the other uh, repeatedly, back and forth. I, I I don't think that they are they are favorites in this matchup against the Azzurri. I just don't see anything that gets me going as far as inspiring confidence in the Spanish side. 